I've always, like, Paul McCartney has always ticked a nerve in me. And I never had a way to explain why he's ticking a nerve. It's just because he gives off bad juju. And because he started in a Nirvana tribute band called Nirvana that sucked. Um, and those were the two points that I had to go off of. But then they released the Beatles documentary. And now I can tell you exactly why Paul McCartney ticks me off. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm shooting up. Um, so there's a couple things that happen in the Beatles documentary that are worth asking questions about. One, did you guys ever pay Billy Preston? Because Paul's retort to Billy made it seem like, hey, dude, you don't really have to be here because we're never going to pay you. And that seems a little bit fucked up. Um, two, uh, at one point, Paul's criticizing George's grammar in a song. I'd like to let you know, Paul, that there are multiple songs that you aren't quite grammatical on. One and two... It's just a poem, man. And sometimes you sacrifice grammatical standards for the poetry, dude. Two. Well, that this is three. This is point three. At one point, Paul McCartney is making fun of uh, George's Hare Krishna retreat, which I'm not a huge fan of the Hare Krishnas just because... One time they tried to recruit me at Hempfest and they didn't recruit me because, well, at first they saw me as a man, but then they I wasn't passing, so they realized I had a vagina, and then they were like, I don't think you can show up, dude. Like, you have a vag. We can't take you. It was very much, like, they didn't say that straight out, but that's kind of what I could gather from social cues. Um, that they would have to ask if I were allowed to enter the temple as a Hare Krishna. Um, so that's the reason why I don't like Hare Krishnas, but that's just like a personal thing. The Hare Krishnas are right in that Krishna, by the Gita, is everything. And I get what they're worshipping. It's just like everyone in India is worshipping that, so George could have gone literally anywhere and given them his money, but the Hare Krishnas got him first. Um, anyway, though, at, at a point in there, George is saying the point of the retreat was to find yourself, and if we were being ourselves, we wouldn't be ourselves right now, which I thought it was a very good point. And I don't think Paul has ever figured out who he is. Paul, have you ever figured out who you are, dude? You're Brahmin, motherfucker. Atman equals Brahmin. If you didn't know, that's who you are. You probably don't know you are that. Actually, I'm positive you think that you're just the ego Paul McCartney. So, safe to say you never figured that part out, dude. For... He started to blame George's leaving on Yoko being there. I'm sure, like, Yoko probably bothered George at one point in his life. Like, everyone bothers everyone. But George had his, had his Hare Krishnas there. I really don't think Yoko was the reason George left the band, Paul. It was because he couldn't put up with you and your asinine bullshit. You wouldn't let George contribute and he had better things to say than you because he was one with Brahmin. I'm not saying that Paul McCartney's not talented. He's a very, very talented dude. But my order of Beatles and the order that I would want to hang out with them are Ringo, George, John, and Paul. And I'll always be that order because Paul is a fucking asshole. And you can just tell it. He's giving off bad juju. And the Beatles documentary just went so far to prove that to me. It didn't make me feel any way better about it. And, um, Paul, like, dude, you're cool. You're a perfectionist, clearly, just like me. So you, you always try to be the best you that you can be, which is super cool. But, but, like, dude, chill. Chill, man, chill. That's all I can say to you. Chill. You're like 
your girl is trying to say something and you were like, don't be Yoko. Like, fuck you, dude. Your girl can say something. You don't have to take it. But she's allowed to have a thought. Anyway. That's the reason Paul McCartney bothers me. I started to read Spinoza's Ethics and it made me come in my pants because it's Like, he defines his definitions, then sets his axioms, then from those derives prepositions to form his argument. And if I ever write my paper, which I probably should, I'm going to write it just like Spinoza's Ethics. That book is something magical. Um, The only comparison I can give... Like, I'm sure multiple books are set up this way, but um, Lewis Carroll's um, Logic Game is set up the same way. But Spinoza's Ethics is better. Uh, I'm in love with it. I'm probably only going to read the first chapter, which is on God, and then steal it and, and set up my shit the same way. But it's... It's good shit, Spinoza's Ethics. Oh my god. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had. I had Paul McCartney rant, Spinoza's Ethics. Um, I have to shoot up, so I'll do that. I never know which leg to shoot up in. It's just a guess. You're supposed to alternate and... I never keep track of the last leg. (laughs) Which is all all you have to do, Kurt. Let's see what band-aid I got. Should I do princess or Crayola? I'll do princess. I haven't done princess in a while. I only use children's band-aids because they're more fashionable. But yeah, if one of the Beatles could tell me if you ever paid Billy Preston, that would alleviate my pain if the answer is yes because I'm a tra- I'm a, like lots of white men I really like the Beatles if you didn't I blame Paul <laughs> I always will blame Paul I like Graham on. The wings aren't bad. Like I said, he's a talented dude. He just seen he gives off bad juju. Bad juju is enough, man. That's all you gotta do is give off bad juju, and you're fucked. In the Kurt book, I'm not gonna want to hang out with you. I don't really want to hang out with anyone, so, I mean, it doesn't really mean anything for me to not like Paul McCartney, because I don't really like hanging out with anyone, but Paul McCartney just takes a special nerve. Huh, there are a couple people that take a nerve in my life, it's Jeff B., Paul McCartney. Are there any others? Sure there's others. T.S. Eliot. I think T.S. Eliot ticks a bunch of people's nerves. It's not only me.
I lost it. Do you ever lose it? You like poke a hole and then you don't know where you poked. So the band aid is just an illusion. You don't actually put it on anything, probably. But you put the band aid just in case you guessed right. That's what I just did. But at least I poked good enough that it didn't come bleeding up because then I wouldn't have had to guess. I would have just known. But that's the reason my Paul McCartney, I've only watched the first two series, like the first two episodes. So I don't know what happens in the third, but so far that's why Paul McCartney ticks me off. I'm sure he'll give me another reason to tick me off in the third episode, but we haven't gotten there. So I, I don't know yet, but Paul McCartney has always ticked me off because he's got bad juju that I can't explain, but now I have. Now I have explained why he gives me bad juju. And so thanks for the Beatles documentary. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I just also learned to conclusively why Paul pisses me off. So that's it. I have a good one.